woe results in destruction and annihilation and at times into an evolution of a new city something similar happened to this village of Rashom the name however has an interesting beginning it was through a misguided conquest that the Portuguese mistook this village for Raichu now in Andhra Pradesh and thus it was called Rashol or Raichu Honorable guests we are about to begin a journey edging forward through the grains of the soil of Rashol so be prepared for the saga of almost 400 years of this great priestly sanctuary is about to begin. The seminary evolved like a phoenix rising from the ashes. It literally rose from the ashes of the College of Jesuits. The Jesuits established their college in Sarsip. It was called the College of Sarsip. It kept on shifting from Margaon to Rashaw. Margaon because it was a central place. Rashaw because there was a protection. In Margaon it was called the College of the Holy Spirit. In Rashaw it was called the College of Our Lady of Snows. It kept on shifting a number of times until it found its place, proper place at the building which is standing now. That is, first it was called the College of All Saints, then the College of Saint Ignatius, then afterwards the seminary of uh, the Good Shepherd, and now it is called the Patriarchal Seminary of Russia. The foundation stone of this building was laid on 1st November 1606 under the auspices of King Don Sebastian. The rector during that time was Father Gaspar Suarez. The construction completed in 1610 and was inaugurated on 1st November 1610. The great saga of this priestly sanctuary was unveiled by various congregations. The forerunners were naturally the Jesuits, from whose college the seminary evolved. They remained on guard till 1759. In 1761, it was given the care of oratorians and was named Bo Pastor Seminary. The priestly sanctuary plunged into deep abyss when it was abolished in 1774 under the pretext that the priests had failed to fulfill the conditions but the real cause was the only principle of economics. The seminary was re-established in 1781 under the care of Vincent Shins. But alas, the human urge for dominion and power proved to be the Achilles heel as the seminary was shut down once again from 1789 to 1793. The seminary was once again revived in 1793 and was managed till 1835 by oratorian priests. In 1835, the expulsion of all orders from Goa by the Portuguese government opened the doors to the Diocese of Goa. And thus, in 1835, it was entrusted to the Diocese and the clergy. It remained as Seminario Patriarchal de Rachol. Setting the priorities right, the rector Bento Ferreira 
built a chapel in 1648. Human beings being body and soul, a house of spiritual nourishment was not enough. So he added a refectory in 1650 to the satisfaction of all the bellies. The intellect had its share too when Bishop Amorim Pessoa founded the library and brought 7,300 books. Let there be light, said Reverend Dr. Jeronimo Simao de Rosario Freitas, and the seminary was electrified during his tenure from 1932 to 1940. During 1940, to 1955. Monsignor Agapito Lorenzo introduced the white cassette in place of the black one. However, the one who remained at the helm of an affair for the longest duration was Monsignor Anacleto Carmo Andro de Silva from Consoli, Goa. His tenure lasted from 1956 to 1980. In addition to the existing structure on 15 December 2002, a three-storied construction consisting of an auditorium, eight classrooms and 12 rooms was inaugurated during the tenure of Father Thomas Dakin Sequeira. A unique feature of this structure is the system situated in between the four walls of the main building. This cistern was built as part of the Jesuit college. It serves first of all to collect water, rain water. In fact, when I was a seminarian, we were drawing water from this cistern in order to, to water the garden. It is said that it was even used at one time for drinking purposes. But now it is no longer used either for watering the garden and much less for drinking purposes. Even before Vatican II could talk of inculturation, we have Indianized depiction of the life of Jesus by Angelo de Fonseca in the infirmary corridor. Depiction of evangelists and prophets near the rector's room. A huge canvas painting of Don Sebastião in rector's parlor and various Renaissance paintings in the staff corridor along with others, make one admire the brilliance and excellence of these artists. As we conclude this great saga of 400 years, and as we arrive to the present day, we recall some landmarks of this seminary. As we conclude the great saga of this 400 years of our celebration, and we arrive to this present day, it's pertinent to recollect, recall uh, the great personalities linked to this institution, uh, such as Father Antonio de Andrad, who was the first rector of the seminary. Then we have other Jesuit uh, rectors, fathers, Rudolf Akoviva, who was martyred in Kupoli, and Father Thomas Stevens, the stalwart of Konkani literature. The first diocesan rector was Father Manuel de Souza from 1842 to 1859. It is also to be noted that the first printing press, the third in Goa and the fourth in Asia, functioned in the seminary for almost 58 years. From 1881 to 1909, the first patriarch of the East Indies, Archbishop de Sebastian Valent, made great reforms. Archbishop Don Sebastian Valent, 
reorganized the seminary studies and raised them to a level of excellence. This reorganization reached such great heights that it was considered to be one of the best seminary trainings in the world. So much so that Pope Leo XIII could not refuse the request to grant this noble institution the faculty to confer bachelor's degree in divinity. As Canon Francis C. V. Vaz, a noted historical scholar and a master of Konkani, who translated the Book of Psalms into Konkani that rivaled the beauty of the original. Though Matthews supported Father Bento Martins in founding the Society of the Missionaries of St. Francis Xavier, popularly known as Pilar Fathers. Today, this priestly sanctuary is marching with a renewed zeal and fervor under the guidance of Reverend Rector Father Dennis Fernandez. Keeping in mind the ever-growing demands of this postmodern world, attempts have been made to give a holistic formation to the seminarians. The seminarians are aptly guided by the professors who have qualified themselves from well-known national and international universities. The seminary also publishes some magazines which brings to the fore the intellect and literary talents of the priests and seminarians. This seminary is a treasure box containing jewels that can adorn almost anything. The talents that seminarians of this great priestly sanctuary are gifted with, if given an opportunity, may very well adorn not just the church in Goa, but any church in the world.